All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our uh, final panel uh, of distinguished uh, guests uh, to talk about, um, you know, the results that we found from the, you know, the study that we just completed. This, this, um, this presentation or this panel is titled How to Forge an Equitable Future for Higher Education from Our Present Chaos. Uh, a, a lofty, a lofty goal, and uh, something that I think our panelists are all very well prepared and uh, um, have the expertise to kind of speak to a lot of these issues. And so we're gonna we're kind of kind of start start local, and we're gonna move more global as we go throughout the presentation. There should be an opportunity for us to take some questions from the participants. If you add those to the the Q and A panel uh, here in Zoom. Uh, someone will be watching those and they'll be will be uh, feeding those to the panelists after we've heard their remarks on on a couple of different areas and so i just want to quickly welcome our our panelists today you know i'm going to read their names um and give you their titles you have their bios on the the the, the, the seminar uh, workshop or wor site so i'm not going to read all of that uh and they're going to continue they're going to add a little bit more to this as they start to speak and answering some questions so we have uh rula diab uh, Assistant Provost for Academic Affairs and I think Director of Center for Innovative Learning at the Lebanese American University in Lebanon. Welcome. If I make a mistake on any of your titles or your roles, uh, please let us know when you have a chance to answer the first question. So I apologize in advance. Uh, we have Aline Germain Rutherford, Vice Provost uh, Academic Affairs at the University of Ottawa in Canada. She's waving her hand behind the black box there. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Patrick, uh, uh, now, how, how, I don't know how to pronounce this, Lyons or Lyons? Uh, I guess it depends. <laughs> Patrick. It's, it's Lyons. Lyons, okay. I could, what I would say as a good kind of a North American presentation of that. Uh, Director of Teaching and Learning Services at Carleton University, also in Canada. Welcome. And Sauma Abu Jaude, probably Abu Jaud. That's uh, good. Jode, Jode, that's good. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, director of the Teaching and Learning Services at Carleton, or no, I'm sorry, Director of Center for Teaching and Learning and Associate Dean of Faculty of Arts and Sciences at the American University of Beirut, uh, also in Lebanon. So welcome to each of you. Uh, thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. Uh, I'm Brian Beatty. I'm an Associate Professor of Instructional Technologies uh, in the World of Education at San Francisco State University, formerly Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs overseeing the academic technology unit here on campus for about eight years, but back in a faculty role now. Uh, and very interested in these topics and kind of work, working in this area myself. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to kind of moderate this panel today. So I'm gonna start with a question for each one of you and um, we'll try to, uh, try to limit our responses to two to three minutes so that we have a chance to kind of hear from everybody and get through a, a few questions before taking questions from the field. Uh, and as you know, in this first one, if you'd like to add to your introduction in any particular way, please do so. Uh, the first question though has to do with kind of your local efforts. And the question is really how, how has the start of our recent term, uh, most of us have been in, in, uh, on campus for anywhere from uh, you know, a couple of weeks to maybe a month or two, uh, how's it worked out so far? And what ways were your faculty preparation uh, successful? And if you've, if you've seen some gaps, what might you have done differently? That's a lot of a lot to load in here. So see if you can answer that in about three minutes. And uh, let's just, let's start in the order I introduced you. So Rula, would you, would you answer that first? Sure, thank you, Brian. Um, okay, I'm Assistant Provost for Academic Affairs at the Lebanese American University, LAU. And uh, I'm also an associate professor of English, applied linguistics. Uh, I am not the director of the Center for Innovative Learning. The CIL is actually um, co-administered by myself and my colleague, Dr. Barbara Atli, assistant provost as well, who has actually just participated in the previous panel. Um, uh, Dr. Ali talked about the center at length. So uh, for the benefit of those who just joined, I'm gonna say very briefly, the code of our center is the faculty fellows program. Uh, these are faculty, fellow, uh, faculty members who serve as advisory board uh, mentors, workshop facilitators, and most importantly, they are the champions of pedagogical innovation uh, across the campus. They come from all schools and all disciplines. And during the ongoing crisis, uh, they have been indispensable in providing the needed faculty support uh, and helping us to prepare for the fall 2020 semester. Um, also, just one thing I wanna say about the preparations for the current fall semester. It's important to point out that in our situation in Lebanon, that is, um, as of last November, 2019, we have suffered from various political security disruptions, um, 
including demonstrations, roadblocks, uh, wide closures, which actually led to many courses switching to an online or hybrid mode uh, for at least part of the fall 2019 semester. And that was two, three months before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in Lebanon. Um, of course, later in spring 2020, we had the uh, full-fledged pandemic. We had um, closures. Um, and this is when we had most of our uh, courses being shifted to online delivery, the uh, what we call really the forced emergency transition to remote delivery. The same thing for summer 2020. So our preparations for the current fall semester were greatly informed really by the considerable experience we gained in fall 2019, spring and summer 2020. Um, the TIL, the Center for Innovative Learning, uh, formed a distance learning support unit composed of the faculty fellows to promote better online delivery practices, to support faculty through webinars individually when needed, we prepared links to uh, short direct videos on concrete steps to set up our LMS, which is Blackboard, uh, using Panopto, working with WebEx, uh, various, uh, various topics. We also developed a CIL support Blackboard course to help faculty to design and develop their courses on our LMS, uh, in addition to an interactive guide that really illustrated the best practices in offering synchronous and asynchronous classes. Um, we also devised an academic plan for fall 2020 including a minimum set of requirements for online courses, which were approved by our Council of Deans back in June. So the planned offerings for the current fall 2020 semester originally uh, included uh, a proposal for 60% of courses to be delivered in hybrid mode and around for the remaining around 40% uh, fully online. However, uh, due to the deteriorating health situation in the country and the development of the pandemic, um, so far this fall, we have only been delivering courses fully online, in, uh, including those who were, uh, that were originally designated as hybrid. But we are assessing the situation regularly. We are allowing certain labs, studios, and special courses uh, that uh, include a, physical, a necessary physical presence component to be held on campus, but under very strict preventive health measures. And of course, we are following the guidelines of our University Emergency Health Response Com Committee. Um, I think I'm going to stop here. Are my two, three minutes over? Yeah, that's fine. Rula, thank okay. you. Uh, I th and I think, uh, I think a lot of us are in a similar situation where we're, we're very limited on campus and trying to do only, the, you know, try to limit ourselves to those things that are most critical there. Um, and yet I think we've all been, obviously, we're more online than anyone ever thought we would be, especially going for, forward and starting to plan for spring now. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks. And, and I think you, you bring up a good point that when we talk about equity and being prepared for this, it's not just pandemics that that can kind of force us into uh, a completely different mode. Uh, and so uh, we do need to be prepared for, uh, you know, in the, in the future in particular for whatever comes our way. OK, so uh, thank you. Uh, Aline, would you would you go next? Yes, thank you very much. And uh, so sorry for not having my camera. <laughs> Technology is wonderful, but sometimes technology is also <laughs> uh, very strange. And I don't know why all of a sudden my camera doesn't work anymore. Never mind. Um, so first of all, thank you for this wonderful initiative and for allowing us to exchange of our experiences. The University of Ottawa um, uh, for this term is 96% um, of, uh, of the courses are online and uh, We've kept uh, a few courses, 4%, so uh, on campus. And again, these are those courses which would be very, very difficult to offer uh, if they were online. So courses li like labs and, and, and so on. How is it going this term? Um, I have to say that I'm still crossing my finger because we are at the beginning of the, of the semester. Uh, but it is going fine uh, because preparation, uh, you know, has been uh, really very um, intense uh, in the spring and in the summer. U of O, the University of Ottawa, is not a university uh, which was known for online courses. I mean, before the pandemic, we had only 2% of our courses online or taught at distance, you know, remote uh, teaching. So which means that the transformation and the transition uh, all of a sudden in the end of March, you know, in one week, uh, everybody had to put their courses online. It has been radical uh, and it has been fast. However, the, the commitment of all the services, not only the faculty, 
part-time and uh, full-time, I have to say, uh, their commitment, but also the commitment of all the services has been absolutely wonderful. So that during the spring and the summer, uh, we were more on the reactive mode, but uh, you know, all the courses has been, have been transferred uh, online. Uh, but during the summer, we also worked a lot to prepare the fall term. And so that it was not just reactive, but it was also developing with um, quality. Of course, the quality of the teaching and learning experience uh, is uh, paramount to uh, all our institutions and, of course, for the University of Ottawa. But we have uh, around 18% or 19% of our students, they are um, international students. Um, and also a lot of our Canadian students are also across the world, by the way. So uh, one of the challenge was also to ensure that we could reach out to uh, all our students across the world. I have to tell you that we are using different platform, but we are also using Zoom. And uh, when we check the number of countries which are connected, you know, since September, as the course are offered, uh, we have an average of between 110, 130 different countries where the connection come from. So which means that we have a, a large amount of our students which are Canadian and international across the world. And of course, these are, have been the challenges to ensure that, you know, the, the connection, that the, um, that the, the condition of uh, accessibility and so on were met. Um, but I have to say that um, faculty are telling us that uh, they are discovering the joy of online teaching. Uh, <laughs> we, we have around 3,000 uh, faculty, full-time, part-time, and we were worried because we didn't have a culture of remote and online uh, teaching and learning. Uh, however, again, the commitment, the work of all the services which have been done to uh, support students and faculty show that it's not the it's not all our faculty but a lot of our faculty are telling us this is manageable uh, there are some added value to online teaching and learning and this and they see that they are really discovering all the different tools um, so it's not um, all that negative far from it and for students some students also tell us you know fits better my uh, my my way of life it's better my my, my way of uh, you know my scheduling that i have to do for working because they're still working and, and studying so so there are some positive points into it however we see also some uh, some issues uh, for instance um, uh, going online means that you have to transform the way you're going to assess the learning and so like many other universities, we've, you know, we've been <laughs> working hard to explore the different uh, online proctoring tools. <clears throat> and also we had to deal with all the security issues and all the privacy issues. But also um, we, were, we have been working with the faculty on you know, the different ways of assessing, of evaluating uh, learning. So which means that pedagogically it has been also a, a nice uh, work, uh, a nice rethinking of what evaluation is but the issue and the challenge coming from that is that many faculty heard us about you know you don't need to evaluate only with midterms and final exams you can have a more continuous you know uh, evaluation throughout the term however now students are telling telling us we are overwhelmed by you know uh, little uh, assignments and so now we have to work with our faculty and to uh, balance you know to find the right balance uh, with those uh, evaluations so that was one of the issue which we are discovering. Uh, we also are looking at, um, you know, the need of uh, training not only our faculty with all the different tools, but because we have students coming from different regions in the world, um, and some more and some less familiar with the technologies and the online platforms that we are using. So uh, we have, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of work to do to ensure that these students are really well prepared, well trained to use all those different types of, uh, of technology. And one of the last issue, or the last issue, one of the issue that we are seeing also is that because the students, certainly the students coming from the from the 
the secondary uh, system and entering for their first year the university um, uh, because themselves they could not really finish normally you know the, the their year um, so we we put in place different uh, uh, different tools and different ways of uh, identifying early uh, at-risk students because we do not have the same type of data that we could have, you know, if the year, you know, um, uh, the, 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 the scholar year had, had been finished, you know, uh, uh, in, the, in the spring. So, so these are also some of the issues that we're seeing. But, you know, um, as a whole, I, I think that for the moment, I'm still crossing my finger, it's going well. And I really want to thank all the faculty all the services who have worked so so hard and in such a collaborative way so that we could you know still um, uh, continue uh, our mission as a university uh, thank you elaine yeah your point about the faculty um, response in the fall being different than in the spring and in the summer more since from a reactive kind of a traumatic reaction almost for most of us or many of us to now one of uh accepting more of the role of an online instructor or teacher and learning how to do that well. Uh, you know, there, conversely, there are obviously there are issues on the student side where, you know, students now all of a sudden are in four online courses and all they're all becoming more and more engaging. And so I think there's, there's a little bit of student shock going on too, although I think a lot of them do appreciate uh, the more engaging instruction that they're getting. So we'll talk more about that as far as on the student side, I think, in our next question. Uh, Patrick, let's, uh, let's go to you. Thank you. Good, good afternoon or good evening or good morning, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, thank you for joining us today. So I'm the director of teaching and learning at Carleton University. And just for a little bit of context, I'm, we're also in the Ottawa area with the University of Ottawa. Um, we collaborate extensively uh, with uh, our great partners there. Um, we're an institution of about 30,000 students. It's a comprehensive university and like all institutions that you've heard from uh, today uh, have pivoted to uh, being a fully online institution. Uh, all our courses this uh, fall term will be fully online and essentially all our winter courses um, coming up in January will be fully online. Uh, we try to make these decisions early and communicate these decisions as early as possible to our faculty members, our contract instructors, and our students. And I think one of our philosophies as we prepared for um, online delivery is communication. Being as open and transparent with our decision-making process, um, with our students, and with our instructors to help set expectations and to be realistic. Um, to touch on the question of how things are going, um, fingers crossed, knocking on wood, things are going well. That being said, I'm a big fan of paranoia. Um, I think teaching and learning centers right now are listening, looking, and trying to find and understand what the canary in the coal mine is. Um, where is the next problem going to be? We're in a pandemic. Yes, in some ways, it's not as reactive or um, immediate in terms of our decision making, yet things are changing. We're still um, in a crisis, uh, a global crisis, and we need to recognize that and pay attention to what's happening to our students and our instructors. Um, our preparations, I like to think, were remarkably successful, and they were on the pillars of this idea of empowerment. Empowerment of our staff members, empowerment of our faculty members, and empowering our students. And what I mean by that is providing access to resources and expertise, whether that was providing equipment to students or instructors, um, making sure that we hired uh, more uh, expertise so that we could meet regularly and frequently with as many different faculty members and instructors on camp uh, uh, virtually um, to, to address their particular challenges. Um, and it's this idea of being responsive. We, the amount of emails and calls and collaborations were mind boggling. We calculated that uh, we interacted with 50% of Carleton's uh, professoriate and contract instructors. So um, almost in the neighborhood of a thousand uh, interactions with individuals and 
you know, many of these were multiple interactions. Um, our faculty members, we, we had uh, over uh, 220 professional development sessions um, where over 2,000 participants participated. This idea of trying to teach them to fish um, was a, a key aspect of what we were trying to do. And the message, the underlying message in all of our professional development, our communications and our, and our setup for the fall term and then going into the winter term is try to make your decisions centered around the student experience. Mm -hmm. Think about what's happening to them and understand that the decisions that you will make, whether it is your assessment strategies, your delivery strategies, how does that support their learning and how does that support their access to education? So that's all the positive side of things. Um, and that has carried forward, but as Eileen and other participants have mentioned, we do see little flags here and there. I wish some of the things we had started earlier. We hired 17 new educational developers and instructional designers and educational technologists. Uh, we're already a, we were already a large team uh, within teaching and learning services, uh, almost 70 full-time uh, staff members across all kinds of facets of teaching and learning at the institution. But we asked for these resources perhaps maybe six weeks to later than I would have liked. So this added stress to our own staff as we had to onboard 15 new uh, employees in a challenging circumstance. But one of the advantages of this is you have access to talent from around the world now. They don't need to come to the Ottawa, uh, the Ottawa area they can be from anywhere in the world. And so we attracted some amazingly talented individuals to join our team. Um, so asking for resources earlier, I think at some points is being a little bit more persistent. And what I mean by that is we met with every single academic unit uh, at Carleton. We insisted on this, but some of these meetings stretched out well into August. And so there was an inequity in some ways of some departments and some educators having access to our resources earlier um, because we had these early meetings with them in May and even in April about all the resources and tools and expertise they could get access to while a group in August where due to scheduling reasons or it was seen perhaps not as important to them were only becoming aware of the resources that were available. This is not to say that we weren't communicating with the entire campus, but there is a difference when you're being bombarded with email and messages about all the things that are happening on campus. Um, it's one thing to see those things. It's another thing to experience this when you're in a room with 30 or 40 other uh, faculty members, a virtual room, and you're talking about how um, you can imagine working and developing an online course or the resources that you have from there. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because uh, I'm cognizant of time. Okay, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on, and a lot of good news uh, shifting there. I'm, I'm I'm very impressed at your ability to hire so many more uh, staff supporting this effort. And I uh, think uh, you know, on our campus, we were just lucky not to lose anyone as we're adjusting to the budget realities of going on. So. Uh, uh, you know, very strategic uh, thinking and planning uh, from your campus leadership and, and uh, you know, especially I'm sure you and your role to make this all work. Uh, hopefully that continues. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, Soma, could you, uh, could you answer the first question? Do you remember what yeah. it was? <laughs> now I'm going to say good day because I don't know where we are. So uh, good day to everybody. <clears throat> uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, I'm the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning and an associate dean, but I, I carry a third hat, which is related to what's going on in the world nowadays, which is the, you know, a body that was uh, established uh, during spring of uh, last year, which is a council of, a, a council of uh, associate deans that is extended to include uh, all entities related to the learning at the university level as a coordinating body. Uh, so uh, in addition to, to this extended council of associate deans, 
the university, we, we established like academic continuity teams in every faculty so that the organization would help in spreading the uh, whatever needed to, to be done. Now, how did the, uh, the beginning of the year, uh, how was it? I think, you know, uh, as Rula already said, uh, fall was chaotic for us because we were surprised with demonstrations and events that forced us to do some online learning. However, when the, when the pandemic uh, came in fall in spring, now we were a little bit more ready and therefore I can say that the March and on and the summer was the laboratory for us to, to practice on what we needed to do training teachers, identifying our needs, and then planning in more details for the four. However, uh, you know, we had planned to have part of the uh, courses uh, like uh, partly on campus, like uh, such as labs and studios and so on. However, with the resurgence of the COVID-19 and the advice of our expert committee, we had to also to go back to being totally online for at least the first month until next week we will be totally online. And then hopefully from October on, we'll go back to being partly hybrid, especially giving new students an opportunity to, uh, to really experience the campus. Uh, because, uh, because I think many of our students are complaining that, you know, they did not uh, join a university just to take courses online. They could have taken courses anywhere online. Now, uh, but, but now I think our faculty are, are ready because they've been, as I said, they've been trained. They identified the resources they needed. We had several surveys of students to find what the problems were and we tried to address them. And then we meet with the student uh, students regularly to get their feedback. So it is okay. However, there are still a number of challenges. And uh, those challenges, in addition to the many ch challenges that were identified before, in my opinion, in, in Lebanon, we have a challenge of access. You know, I was, for example, I was really... I was really afraid to have the meeting today. Now it is almost 9.30 p.m. So I couldn't stay at the university. So like I had to come home to do the, the meeting. And I was really nervous to if, the, if I'm going to get the internet or not. Mm -hmm. And if I'm experiencing this, many of our students are experiencing this. Now we're trying to solve this as of maybe uh, if, if the COVID, COVID situation allows us as of October 12th, we're going to allow a, certain, a number of students to come on campus so that only they have access to the internet. Because that not only do we have access, a lack of access to the internet for many students, also we have power outages that will not allow the students to really uh, attend courses synchronously. And therefore we have to resort to being also asynchronous and synchronous at the same time. Another, another I think, uh, uh, another challenge is the access of faculty members. You know, if, if students are finding problems with access to the internet, also faculty members the same. Uh, another uh, another problem I think is the culture of parents in Lebanon, and this is challenging some of the universities, private universities that that charge fees, and then parents are not really their, their culture does not accept online learning as if it is real learning. And therefore, they're questioning the quality of the learning that the students are getting. And this is, I think, influencing the income of the university. But the situation, in my opinion, for a country like Lebanon, is that the universities, whether any university in Lebanon, especially the private universities like uh, AUB or LAU, are places where people of different uh, religious groups meet, know each other, meet like ordinary people, and going online is not going to give them this opportunity. I think this is, I think in my opinion, this is one of the most uh, dangerous things about the situation of going online totally, mm -hmm. is that students of different uh, groups in Lebanon will not get a chance to interact with each other. And by itself, uh, 
I think this is as important of an education as getting a degree in any subject area. So as a, in, in, in summary, I'm going to say that we're of course ready and things are moving relatively well. Of course, uh, the, the problem of assessment, I didn't talk about it, is still a problem, but we're trying to solve it by using all sorts of things. And that was a very positive thing because faculty members are now ready to, you, to do alternative assessment methods. It used to be midterm, final, and that's it and multiple choice questions for many of them. Now, many of them are thinking of using alternative assessment methods, but it is still a challenge uh, because of the uh, issue of uh, integrity and ensuring that the, uh, we have reliability of the results. I'm going to stop here and I think uh, this is enough. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your comment and the way you've, uh, you've already kind of moved us into what I'd like to focus on really probably for the rest of our our relatively short session is moving from the concern about reaction to what we had to do to find ways to teach well online and now looking at issues of equity that have we either knew about before but have been been accentuated or we've discovered new issues of equity that we've never had to deal with before. How do we move then and how are you planning to move uh, maybe even taking advantage of the opportunities as, as, as uh, difficult as they are to kind of move your entire you know your, your community forward in, around issues of equity. Uh, not just on the technical side, but also on the, the cultural side, uh, like you were just referring to, Soma. Um, so, Rula, why don't we hear from you again first? We ha you haven't been able to talk for a while, so. Um, yeah, first I'd like to just um, reiterate what Soma was talking about. Definitely when it comes to challenges in Lebanon, um, they revolve around technical issues such as internet connectivity and electricity cuts and so forth, which do affect everyone. However, not everyone has the same resources to address these challenges. I'm talking about various socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, we do adapt to electricity cuts by the use of generators. Uh, internet, con internet connectivity issues, of course, require more bandwidth, all of which costs money. So, and not all members of our community, whether LAU or Lebanon, of course, have similar resources or access to reliable internet or even their own laptops or devices. So at LAU, we've tried to address these challenges in, in some ways. Um, in spring, the Council of Deans approved providing faculty uh, with a limited home internet connection reimbursement for the purchase of extra bandwidth. Uh, this was when we moved uh, almost totally to, to remote delivery. Uh, similarly, students who do not have reliable um, internet access or laptops at home were uh, assisted with internet charges Again, limited amounts because of, uh, I mean, again, uh, in Lebanon right now, we have a, an economic collapse on top of everything else. So we do have limits uh, when it comes to finances. But, uh, but they were provided with the opportunity to uh, also take online exams on campus or to borrow laptops from the LAU library. And assessment is something I'm going to come back to later. Uh, we also encouraged faculty members to... Um, to make use of all internet opportunities on campus, uh, all facilities, all resources, whether recording sessions at our studios, uh, making use of the uh, reliable uh, Wi-Fi on campus, and of course the uh, IT and CIL support. Uh, to facilitate student learning, particularly for those students who do not have, uh, you know, what is required at home. Right now in the fall, we are providing students with the opportunity to, uh, to physically visit the libraries as per an online appointment system under strict health preventive measures and following the guidelines of our uh, emergency health response committee, of course. Um, I'd also like to mention something in relation to equity, which is um, the fact that we had a major catastrophe on August 4 in Lebanon. And this catastrophe resulted in um, hundreds of people uh, losing basically their homes, um, uh, suffering all kinds of, uh, you know, some of them lost loved ones. So we, we have kind of amped up as well uh, counseling efforts. Uh, trying to support our faculty and staff. I'll give you just an example. We have some couple of faculty members who lost their homes who have been accommodated in the dorms. So we've had to deal with issues this year that are truly unprecedented. Um, so when it comes to equity, um, again, we don't know where to start in Lebanon right now. There's a huge need, there's a lot to be done, but I'm really very, very proud of all the efforts that have been made by the CIL, the faculty fellows, and our faculty at large so far. Um, I don't know if I should talk about assessment now and, and um, 
what we've done to try to also provide uh, alternative uh, modes of assessment to encourage faculty to have alternative modes of assessment because we do have students who have anxiety when it comes to online exams. We do have students who, again, for technical issues, it was just not fair for them to, 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 have, to have only one option uh, in assessment. So these are some of the things that, that we've been handling really when it comes to equity. Oh, thank you very much, Rula. Yeah, you you have a you have experienced a set of challenges unlike almost anyone else uh, in in the in the world recently. And uh, no doubt, as you continue to kind of work your way through this and emerge, um, you know, with with a with a focus on equity and an appreciation for equity, um, I think I think one of our great hopes is that the plans that we do make going forward, we kind of build in equity by design as opposed to react to it, which which many of us, uh, especially in my world have, have really kind of grown up with just kind of reacting to issues as opposed to planning to prevent them in the first place. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Aline, do you want to comment on uh, plans for uh, equity? Um, yes, of course. Um, because yes, uh, this has been actually um, um, an important uh, challenge actually. Um, and I think for all of our institution and the pandemic has forced us to um, to think even further and to um, and to also better prepare in, in that sense. Um, um, so, of course, as we were going online, uh, we had all sorts of problem of programs, you know, financial aid programs to uh, to help our students who were in. Uh, region where um, accessibility in terms of uh, internet, in terms of equipment also. In term, so we, we, we've put in place some financial aid programs so that students could be um, uh, better equipped um, to be able to uh, um, uh, attend those uh, online uh, courses. Um, we, we also worked a lot in um, um, mental health issue, wellness, because these are also cause of, uh, of stress and anyway in Canada and anyway uh, uh, in several of our uh, institutions in Canada, we, we were already dealing with, uh, with a, a lot of issues of uh, mental health with our students. So um, we've developed even more resources. We have now a, a mental health and wellness hub uh, with uh, a lot of uh, activities, a lot of uh, online events, a lot of uh, support for our, for our students, uh, and not just academic support. We have a fantastic portal for academic support, but also created a, a huge portal, again, for wellness and mental health issue, so that students have right away access to, uh, to uh, counselors, to advisors, to mentors, uh, um, so that has been also something that we have, uh, we were already in the process of, uh, of developing, but it has, the pandemic has accelerated actually the, uh, the whole process of development. The whole notion also of diversity and inclusivity, um, already the university um, were just finishing actually its uh, strategic planning, which is called Transformation 2030. And one of the big, um, uh, we have four pillars in this uh, strategic planning, but one of the important pillars, all of them are important, but the big one for us was uh, more agility. So the whole notion of being agile in any, any sector of our university. And with the pandemic, it has really um, pushed us uh, and accelerated actually our all thinking about agility. And agility means also being more uh, uh, responsive to uh, diversity and inclusivity and also to be more proactive in terms of uh, diversity and inclusivity. So we have been also um, uh, rethinking a lot of our programs in terms of not only their contents, but to whom these programs can be addressed. So um, more diverse popul student populations to bring into, uh, into our programs. Uh, and also in terms of the delivery, the format of this program with that whole uh, notion of accessibility uh, for these programs. So, uh, you know, for strategic planning, which was just starting, I have a feeling that we've 
<laughs> we've in a few months we've done the work of maybe a year uh, in terms of changing the culture of our university so that all these aspects of accessibility of diversity of inclusivity uh, are now really uh, uh, at the front of our thinking we have also worked a lot in the uh, in the notion of uh, interculturality, uh, because as I said, we have a lot of uh, international students, but also uh, uh, for our Canadian students to be more aware of the different perspectives and the different uh, realities uh, of their fellow students around the world. So uh, we have created a, a program. It's a program which already existed a year ago. It's called UO Global, but it's a program open to all our students. Um, and uh, it's a program which really uh, helped them to um, to uh, reason, to um, to think, to uh, a collaborative work with uh, their different partners, you know, across the world. Um, uh, so with all our international students and Canadian students on different projects, it's also very uh, experiential. Um, and so this program, which was already, you know, we had developed it, is uh, increasing in importance um, and also in its mission, um, again, to, to bring more this notion of inclusivity. Um, and also, um, uh, this is terrible to say, but this uh, pandemic is also an opportunity. Um, and as I said, it's changing really the culture of an institute of our institution. And so we are also working a lot with, uh, uh, you know, all those notion of uh, micro programs and uh, but micro programs, which also bring professional, the professional world and the profession, the people with professional experience within our own programs so that they can also interact with our with our more traditional types of, uh, of students. Um, and here again, I mean, we have changed the culture of a lot of our colleagues uh, so that they are developing programs which are much more open in that sense and also much more agile in terms of the notion of, you know, being stackable and being, you know, com combined in different ways. We have progress advanced so much in this, uh, in this area also. And I want to finish on, on, on something also. I spoke at the beginning about collaboration of all the different services. We've also collaborated in between institutions. I mean, with Patrick, who is here, with Carlton, Carlton and UOVO, we are in the same city and we have collaborated quite a lot. And, and uh, we just launched for the second time a program where faculty from Carlton, faculty from uh, UOVO are working together to develop together uh, online modules, online courses, uh, which are OERs, by the way, you know. Um, so that was important. But we are now uh, creating uh, at U of O a strategic committee that we call it the Strategic Committee for Academic Support, which brings together all the stakeholders or representative of all the stakeholders which have something to do with the notion of support, either support for students, support for professors, technical support, any type of support. We bring them together in a strategic committee so that we can have a more systemic a more collaborative, a more coherent vision of support. And when we speak about support, the whole notion of equity is, of course, at the center of, uh, you know, of that strategic committee so that we can offer solutions, but which have really been seen through the different perspectives of, uh, you know, all the different communities that we have and sectors that we have at the university. So, we have been, the pandemic has pushed us to think better, to, th to be more daring, I have to say, um, but to offer uh, more systemic solutions, actually, to our students and to our faculty. Uh, thank you. There's a lot. There's a lot in there. I appreciate the the focus on designing uh, agility and agile came up several times in what you were talking about. I think that's you know incredibly important for us because you know one thing we do know that change even if we didn't think so before change is constantly upon us, uh, and we need to be you know, be be designing our systems to be able to support that uh, kind of resilient by design. Patrick, do you want to say a few words on uh, equity and what you're uh, hoping to take advantage of? 
Uh, sure. I think, I mean, what Rula and Ilin have said, uh, I think hold true across the board for most institutions. So I just want to highlight like maybe one little difference or, or thing to think about is the pandemic has shone a spotlight, a spotlight on a whole series of different issues and challenges in higher education. And equity is one that is hugely important. I think post-secondary institutions in general have thought that they have done a really good job in terms of being equitable, accessible uh, to learners. I'm not so sure that all institutions can, based on the pandemic and based on the responses and some of the things that they're seeing, that they, they've, this has created an opportunity to look more closely at some of these issues. Um, and certainly I think that's the case at Carleton. There are most definitely socioeconomic differences and the pandemic has acerbated some of these things and then made them more challenging, but it's made it more visible. And that visibility is critically important as teaching and learning centers look to act as advocates and as leaders um, because traditionally teaching and learning centers have been leaders in this, these areas. And I think it's important for us to keep these issues at the forefront. Um, our students with disabilities have always faced challenges. The moving online has created opportunities for increased accessibility, but it has shown that there are a long ways to go with many of our educational technology tools. And then from inclusivity and diversity perspective, we are in bubbles. Our students are not necessarily interacting with the same range of people that they have ever, that they have in a face-to-face -face kind of environment when you're in a large community. And so I think institutions need to pay clear attention to this and provide opportunities and maintain services and activities that bring and showcase the diverse uh, and inclusive set of ideas that can be brought on a campus about idea sharing and diversity of cultures. This is a fear that I have that when we work in this fully online model where we're focused in on um, moving from virtual space to virtual space that we're not interacting with a diverse set of the campus. I think I'll leave it at that cognizant of time. Patrick, thank you for those insightful comments. I think that's a that's a very good point. And it was reflecting some of what Samu was saying earlier. Samu, do you want to have a, the last minute here? We're, we're almost out of time, but... You know, I, I think the, the word that I'm going to use is uh, accommodation, because for the students, we focused on faculty me members accommodating the differences uh, that are available there. So if you, you, do, you do not have access to the, the internet, then every less every uh, lecture or lesson is being taped and then uh, uh, uploaded on Moodle so that they have access to it when there is no problem with accessibility. We have uh, a lot of scholarship students from sub-Saharan Africa. So they were accommodated in that they were given a special treatment and many of them stayed on campus uh, in the dorms under very strict uh, health conditions. As for support, the other word is support. And then uh, because of the uh, problems with uh, lack of equity, some people are not able to afford faculty members. Now, faculty members have access to campus all the time. And then many rooms have been, many, many, many more rooms have been equipped so that they can tape their courses because we wanted them to be synchronous and asynchronous at the same time. Every lesson is taped. And then uh, I think what we've learned, I want to say this is the last thing, what we've learned is that I hope we had a continuity planning before this pandemic. We did not have it. Now we know had we had this continuity planning in time of crisis, I think it would have been much easier. Now we know what to do if there is a crisis, but let's hope that there are no more crises here. But now I think we have all the tools that we need to be able to do well in, in, in time of crisis. You gave me a minute and that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's very well said. I think it sometimes takes us all to be shaken up inst organizationally, institutionally, yeah. to realize this is an important thing to be ready for no matter what it is coming down the future. And so hopefully we can do this and more. So again, we can be planning for doing this in a more equitable manner across all of those areas and issues and aspects that we talked about. 
I think we're out of time. Uh, unfortunately, we could have spent at least another hour on this, I think. Uh, uh, and so um, I guess um, thank you very much, uh, Patrick and Rula and Soma and Aline. Uh, we appreciate your sharing your expertise with us and your time today. Um, and um, that is the kind of the wrap of the panel.